if we look at some key uh, use cases for for computing, uh, we have the connected cores and the V2X. Uh, currently, uh, there is uh, active active efforts from different industrials uh, on connected cores and V2X, which is uh, V2X vehicle to cloud, vehicle to infrastructure, and uh, vehicle to vehicle even, which is expected by year 2020 with the 5G uh, standard. So there is a very big growth in the connected car, car market right now, and uh, 5G industry even is moving from connected cars to, to autonomous driving cars. It's expected by 5G time frame to allow self-driving, to allow uh, inf automated telematics like traffic and road weather condition alerts to allow infotainment services as music streaming, remote and automated management for the software and firmware, accident reports in real time. So all this uh, to have autonomous driver uh, driving, uh, which is expected by uh, 2020 time frame. Uh, we cannot rely on the cloud. We need uh, compute resources next uh, to the vehicle. And so here the fog and edge compute is a key tenant for uh, V2X. Uh, uh, and uh, earlier, uh, if, if you're familiar with the GSRC standard, which is direct short range communication, which is with IEEE 802.11p, uh, they spoke about RSU or roadside unit. So the notion of roadside unit was discussed earlier. And now uh, we can say that this roadside unit can be a part of the fog uh, ecosystem as a fog element. The roadside unit can be a fog element for compute, for processing, for communication with vehicles. Uh, so if we take one use case uh, for, uh, for vehicles, we have ro road traffic and vehicle surveillance. Uh, if we, we're not speaking about connected vehicles now, we're not speaking about autonomous vehicle, we're speaking about the vehicles of today. If uh, we want to do a kind of traffic and vehicle surveillance in an autonomous way, uh, a video surveillance is taking place right now in, in some cities. Uh, and so we, we can see cameras on the roads, but we wonder how these cameras work. Uh, do they work in an efficient way? And what I learned is that most of these cameras are put there just to to let the driver disciplined and it's very hard to make them work and to make them operate uh, in um, covering all the roads. So if we have, uh, if we count on uh, for computing and mobile edge computing, this scenario can be realized and can be realized easily. So uh, the cameras can be easily connected to a gateway an IoT gateway, uh, and we have uh, some trials, uh, field trials testing uh, this service. And the IoT gateway can continuously collect the video feeds from the cameras, uh, and the IoT gateway is proximate to the cameras. And then the IoT gateway sends to, an, to the MEC server, which is in its region, uh, whether the whole video feed or uh, after aggregation, or the IoT gateway can run some analytics and send to the MEC server uh, the result of the analytics uh, and uh, the analytics can be license plate recognition, can be road traffic, how dense is the traffic itself and uh, this can happen in a smooth and automated way. Uh, better than using a cloud solution, using a back-end cloud solution can be very, very expensive for uh, such service. If we look at another uh, use case, which is EDAS on roads. Uh, EDAS, usually we have the advanced driver assisted services, which is in high-end cars. High-end cars right now, they are all equipped with EDAS system. But if we look for an affordable and community EDAS service on roads, which is a compelling thing, this can happen through uh, edge compute with video surveillance. Meaning what? Meaning that instead of having, that's a, a car which is not high-end car, it doesn't have an EDAS system, but it can use a road-assisted EDAS system. Cameras on roads, uh, if we take lean departure as an example, uh, cameras on roads, uh, 
ticking video capture uh, continuously and uh, the video feeds are sent to the IoT gateway. The IoT gateway itself can run the analytics to detect the land departure or can send the video feed completely to the MEC for, uh, the de uh, for detecting land departure. And if the land departure is uh, detected, then the driver receives a warning. This warning can come on his mobile phone or there can be a small piece of dongle uh, with a cellular connectivity in this car, which can cost a little amount of money compared to an EDES system in a high-end car. And the driver receives a warning. So that's, uh, that's uh, a kind of service that can be deployed using Edge uh, and for compute. Uh, another thing is uh, self and smart parking for autonomous vehicles. That's more advanced uh, service. Uh, when we come to the era of autonomous vehicles, we will face a problem of parking. Autonomous vehicles meaning unmanned vehicles, meaning no driver. So when we uh, when we're driving, we can manage uh, to park our cars, but a vehicle with no driver needs some assisted operation for parking. So how this uh, can happen? We need an infrastructure unit. We need an infrastructure unit. We cannot count on the cloud to be able to guide the vehicle how to park or where to park because the cloud is far from the parking lot. But if we have an IoT gateway, which is considered as an infrastructure unit, uh, at the parking entrance and this IoT gateway can uh, have all the information continuously on the available parking lot. Uh, so when the smart, uh, when the autonomous vehicle enters the smart parking, uh, it's, uh, it can, uh, the, uh, this is infrastructure. Uh, it, it 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 receives it receives from the infrastructure unit information on the available parking lot, and so the autonomous driving vehicles are equipped with navigation, uh, intelligent navigation. So they take just the X Y Z uh, from this uh, infrastructure unit of the available parking lot, and they can navigate to it. In terms of payment, uh, payment also will be. Uh, paying for parking by an autonomous vehicle, how this can happen. The MEC server can be of uh, help here, meaning when the autonomous parking, when the autonomous driving vehicle enters the smart parking, uh, uh, the entrance time and maybe the LPR of the vehicle are sent to the MEC server, which identify uh, together with the, with the time of entrance. And at the exit, the time of exit is also transmitted. And here there will be the duration uh, of the vehicle, of this vehicle, which is noticed and automatic billing can happen after that with, with the banking uh, uh, system. Uh, what's more here is uh, multimedia and video streaming in autonomous vehicles uh, or autonomous cars. We're speaking, uh, we're speaking of autonomous cars, autonomous cars meaning passengers, uh, meaning unmanned vehicles, but there are passengers. Passengers uh, will, will not be driving, so th there is a need for entertainment. And even we're speaking of uh, multimedia inside the cars on multiple screens. And uh, we're looking even now for solutions for connectivity for streaming video on multiple screens for autonomous vehicles. So here, uh, if we look at uh, continuous video streaming from the cloud uh, to uh, the back, uh, to the back, uh, to, to, the, to the screens, to the seat screens, it would be a very expensive information. But the MEC server can be helpful here to continuously uh, stream video to vehicles, uh, it, the video, would be received by the IVI system and the IVI system inside IVI is in vehicle infotainment system and the IVI system will internally uh, stream the video through another Wi-Fi solution inside the vehicle. But uh, video coming from the cloud is better to come from the edge cloud from uh, an MEC server here to save resources. Uh, another thing here is the e-health, which is becoming surveillance uh, in clinics, for example. Uh, that's a use case which comes into the play, and we have different discussions with uh, hospitals, with uh, uh, 
healthcare uh, providers to, to see the opportunity of automating uh, the monitoring and surveillance of patients uh, through IoT solutions. And here, if we look at the patient's room uh, in a hospital or in a clinic, uh, we need two things. We need to continuously monitor the patient, especially those in a critical status, and also have a control to the different equipments in the patient's room. So, uh, if we count on the cloud, it will be a hectic uh, operation in terms of resources and also sensitivity of the information which is being transmitted. So, what, uh, what, what can be a useful solution is having gateways also as, as FOC elements, uh, speak, uh, receiving video streams from cameras in each patient's room and uh, running uh, a part of analytics here or even another part in the MEC server uh, and notifying uh, the staff whenever there is a problem. That's for the surveillance through video, but more than that, we can have a control also, control flow from the remote staff to any of the patients uh, through for uh, controlling the different devices in, in the room. So here we need a reliable communication. We need a real time. We need a low latency communication. If we want to stop uh, a device uh, or to put on a device, we need this to happen in real time. So uh, it, 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 it can be easy deployed by the edge uh, devices than bypassing by the cloud. Uh, retail also stores uh, and promotions, uh, pushing promotions to to uh, customers in stores is, is, is becoming an appealing uh, use case and there are a lot of digital sign, signage uh, devices which is being uh, available more and more in retail. But even with digital signage, uh, we cannot attract uh, the, uh, the store's uh, customers uh, so often. We cannot ensure uh, if they can read, uh, always read the digital signage or not. So an idea also is, uh, and this happens in retail, uh, by the way, there are solutions which has cameras and which does uh, face recognition, not face recognition, gender recognition, recognition so to keep privacy uh, and uh, based on the age and gender uh, there is uh, there is a statistics which goes to uh, the retail owner to know uh, the demography of, of the customers that's what happens today uh, but we can do more uh, meaning what meaning based on the de based on the demography of the customers these customers can receive coupons on their cell phones for example uh, so this solution can be deployed through an edge solution an iot gateway uh, which takes the video streams from uh, and do age recognition gender recognition until here this part is there now we have iot gateways in stores which captures video which takes the video feeds and do age and gender recognition just for statistics information, not more. How can we add more? Uh, this statistic information can go to the MEC server and the MEC server can push coupons back uh, to uh, the customer based on the age and based on the gender. Uh, 